Hello and welcome to Extreme Academy Live and welcome back to Extreme Academy Live. This is where you come to advance your knowledge, advance your skills and advance your future. This is course three. This is all about advancing your career. Uh, and don't forget at the end of this course, there'll be an exam. Um, it's free of charge, just like the course. Uh, and you'll be able to get another certification with Extreme. Put that on your resume uh, and impress whoever you're trying to get a job with or whoever you're trying to advance your career with. So we're getting ready to go. I'm just going to talk to Claire, just see if we're ready to start with the first feature. So Claire, how are you doing? Are we, uh, are we ready to go? Hi, Rowan. Um, we are ready to go, but I've actually had a different idea. Um, I know it's a bit last minute, but uh, what do you think about doing this in the office? We can go to the office? Yeah, of course, we, we can go to the office now. Um, we can go to the office now, and I don't think it will take us too long to get there either. How, how long will it take you to get there? I think I can get there in about 60 seconds. Okay, I think I can do that too. Right, let's go, I'll race you. See you I'll there. Try it. See you there. new setup what do you think we're back and we're in the office we're, we're in the office great idea claire great idea to come and do this in the office i'm so excited um because yeah we've done course one done course two tick tick and yeah course three so tell us what it's about rowan well do you think i should do the intro again i think so, so. I yeah I, it was my fault i did cut so uh yeah let's hear it from the top uh, let's do it from the top so welcome welcome to extreme academy live this is where you come to advance your knowledge advance your skills and advance your future. We're delighted to be bringing you this course. It's free of charge again, it's in YouTube, and there's a certification. Don't forget, at the end of this course, and it's a shorter course, we'll, we'll get into some details in a, in a second, uh, you'll be able to take another certification exam. You better add that one to your resume, and this is gonna help you advance your career. Now, I know you're all thinking, somebody's missing. So somebody's Claire, who, missing. Who, who's missing? I think we all know who's missing. It's Isaac, but fear not. Um, we have sent Isaac on some missions and throughout course three, we will be catching up with him. Um, yeah, he's in some new and funky locations and he's going to be talking to us uh, a little bit where he is and what he's doing. So yeah, watch this space. Great stuff. So um, yeah, Claire, what, what should we start with? Um, so we've covered Isaac. Now let's talk about course three and uh, yeah, what we've got installed for everyone here and uh, what they should expect. Absolutely, so there's a, there's a few things different this time. So firstly, it's shorter, it's only over four weeks. It's gonna be one hour a week, so same time, same place on YouTube. Um, and we've done this a little bit differently. We've got a lot more features, so we're calling them features. Yeah. Um, and these, these are gonna you're, gonna, you're gonna get to know them over the coming four weeks. Um, but the, the, the aim of this course, uh, the aim of this course, Claire, is really to help people get a job or will help you get a be better job. Um, so we're gonna equip you with knowledge and you're gonna be able to gain perspectives that you probably, you know, would, would take you years to gain uh, in, through, through work experience. We're gonna try and deliver that to you in, in four weeks, over four hours. Um, so we're gonna share with you um, stories from the industry. We've got extreme guests coming in to talk about their career journeys. Um, and like I said, the, the, the whole aim of the course is to help you get a job. So, so, so when, when you know, you imagine Claire, when when people are in that difficult uh, interview situation and you get asked a difficult question, we're hoping we can give you something that will help you answer that and help you stand out from your peers and help you get that 
job that you're looking for. Amazing. Sounds very exciting. Yeah, so that's that's what it's all about. Um, should we um, should we give people a taste of what, uh, what 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 they can expect? What's coming up? I yeah. think we should. Okay, we'll put together a little montage. So why don't we uh, we play the montage? This is what this is what's coming. Wow, that looks that looks amazing. It looks like we're having some fun with this course. Uh, we really are, and like we said, it's slightly different from course one and course two. We want to make this fun. We want to make this engaging, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited for the next few weeks. Yeah, we'll try and have a few laughs. Okay, so so we're going to try and make it entertaining while you learn, um, but also want to make it engaging so you can uh, can communicate uh, with your fellow students and us. So, Claire, can you can you give the um, team here an idea of how they can ask questions, how yeah, they can engage? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, before we're all used to Meeting Pulse, we're actually not going to use Meeting Pulse this time, so you don't need to log on to that app. We are still using our YouTube chat. I mean, before we've seen in the previous courses that everyone absolutely loves the chat, so we're just going to continue that, um, keep asking questions. Our Extreme team are going to be available on the YouTube chat throughout uh, course three as well. So keep asking away questions there. We're also, throughout course three, we're going to be asking you some questions. We want to see your responses on that chat. So definitely, uh, yeah, get your answers in there and um, I can't wait to see what's, uh, yeah. what's going to come out from the students. Yeah. And, and in comments as well. So if you're watching, yeah. if you're watching uh, on demand, if you're recorded, then you can put the comments in the uh, you know, comments down below, and uh, and one of the team will answer. Absolutely. Uh, and not only the chat, we still have our Discord server. Yeah. So um, hopefully the code will be somewhere for us here. And um, yeah, you can go to our uh, Discord server where again we've got Extreme Team um, people already there, um, and I'm there. You're there at Rome. Yeah, yeah, I'll be yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, we're there. Um, so yeah, we can answer any further in-depth questions or even different questions. Doesn't necessarily have to be about um, course three, but uh, yeah, we're here to help and answer what, what we can for you. Great stuff. Should we awesome. get going then? Should we, should we start the should. first feature? First feature is uh, feature mega feature. trends. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We've got to say it properly. Mega trends. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Megatrends, I'm John Barger. Each week we'll be walking you through the biggest megatrends in the industry and what you as a job seeker need to know about them. Those megatrends are working from home, mobility, as a service, as well as artificial intelligence and machine learning. As we go through each of these, you'll see how they're interconnected and interdependent. But before we get started, let's find out what some extreme employees feel about this week's megatrend. About 35 seconds. Zero. Well, um, maybe like 20 seconds. <laughs> um, three and a half hours. S depending on the traffic, between 45 to an hour and a half. One way. An hour. This particular suit, uh, I would say around six weeks ago. When did I use it for work is another question. Uh, two weeks ago. <laughs> 18 months ago. <laughs> That's the sound of my age. That's the sound of a modem connecting to the internet. Uh, that is the sound of a dial-up connection, and after, at the end of it, it should say, you've got mail. Yes, fax machine. Oh gosh, a fax. Not used one of those for, I don't know, 15 years? Today on Megatrends, we'll be talking about working from home. Now that is a timely topic. Megatrends are new aspects of life, work, or communications that have rapid and wide impact. Working from home definitely fits into that category. In 2020 and before, a job interview would have looked very much like this. You sitting on one side of a desk or a conference table and the interviewer on the other. But today, it could look like this. Or it could look like this. Or it could look like this. As a matter of fact, it's very likely that some or many of your interviews will take place over Zoom or other video conferencing tools in the future. 
In the past 18 months, my team and I have made multiple hires. All of those interviews were held over Zoom. As of this broadcast, I've only met two of those new hires face to face. My boss, the Chief Revenue Officer of Extreme Networks, was hired 14 months ago, and I just met him face to face for the first time last week. While you're in an interview, the hiring manager may ask you how you feel about working from home. Now it's important that you've already tried to suss out how that hiring manager feels about it. You may need to tailor your answer to what they want to hear. Maybe. While there is always some value to face-to-face -face meetings, most strong leaders will understand that it is no longer necessary for everybody to be in the same room in order to collaborate. The days of brainstorming on a whiteboard are behind us. Prior to the pandemic, companies spent significant portions of their budget on facilities and travel and entertainment, T and E. While those percentages will never go to zero, they are heading down. Tools like Zoom and Office 365 have allowed us to find new and even more efficient ways to collaborate. You can jump on a video call with a colleague and bring up a virtual whiteboard to sketch out ideas. You can both be editing the same document, presentation, or spreadsheet at the same time and see each other's edits in real time. You can bring in people from all around the world in a matter of seconds. Imagine how much time and money it would cost to bring four people from around the world together for a planning session. Now, you'll also find those managers that want to see you in the cubicle working away. They can't trust that the people that they manage can be efficient or effective without their supervision. The statistics have proven them wrong. With the exception of some retail workers, restaurant staff, and medical personnel, and similar, people are being more efficient and effective working remotely. A good manager will measure you by the output of your efforts, not the hours in your cubicle. Interestingly, recent reports show that a large percentage of people claim that they would quit their job if they were required to return to the office full time. Some reports show that 40 to 60 percent of enterprise employees would prefer to continue to work from home full time and an additional 20 to 30 percent would prefer a hybrid model where they're in the office some days and working from home some days. Think about it. Were you an office worker before the pandemic? What was your commute like? In the U.S., it was not unusual for people to commute an hour or more each way. Would you really want to go to back to that every day? As you're interviewing, think about what kind of manager you're talking to. What kind of manager do you want to work for? And what kind of manager do you aspire to be? With that said, it's important for IT to change in order to support the new normal of working from home. In the past, the focus has been on on-premises gear access points, switches, servers at each location. Now they need to support remote workers getting access to the data and tools that they need from anywhere at any time. I was just speaking to John Abel, the CIO of Extreme Networks, and he summed it up perfectly. He told me, John, I used to have to worry about 30 office locations. Now I have to worry about 3,000. This brings up so many new problems for IT leaders. Where do I host my data and tools? Do I need as much infrastructure at each location? How do I handle security when a worker is at home, at a coffee shop, or at a vacation home in the mountains? Do I need to provide employees with networking gear for home? Should they be able to charge the cost of their internet access back to the company? How do I know if a corporate laptop is being used by other family members? It's a trick question. I don't. So the question is, how do I protect corporate data when a family member uses a corporate laptop? The level of complexity for IT goes up when people work from home. It's a good thing that they have you and me to help them get through this. I hope you found this edition of Megatrends helpful and are enjoying your journey into IT with Extreme Academy Live. Thank you. Wow, what an amazing episode of Mega Trends. I'm sorry, I'm embarrassing myself, but 
who cares? <laughs> so what an amazing topic, working from home, um, that's affected most of the people I know. And if it's affected you, we'd love to hear about it. So put anything you want to say about it in the comments. Um, the team here are here to chat back with you. Uh, yeah, so in the chat or in the comments, we'd love to hear about that mega trend. So now we're moving on to Isaac. He is on the road. So like we said at the beginning, we've been sending him on some missions and Isaac's going to be telling us uh, by bringing where he is and bringing this topic to life. So, uh, so yeah, Isaac, over to you. Working from home is something that nowadays we speak about so much as if it's something so innovative and some, so new. Yet, working from home has been something that our forefathers, our ancestors, if we go back three, four hundred years, that's the way that things were. Maybe you were an iron monger and you had your little iron forge and, and you'd make materials. Perhaps you were a carpenter and you'd spend your afternoons making furniture for the villagers, for the local villagers. And we worked from home and the family unit stayed together. And we didn't spend two hours on the road to be able to provide for our families. So we talk about work from home like it's something, you know, that's revolutionary. It's only the fact that networking has made that revolutionary. We don't use tongs and hammers anymore. We use keyboards and we hammer out emails and things like that. Today, I'm off to Portugal, to Porto, to go and interview somebody who is an international interpreter. He does simulive interpretations. So someone speaks in a language and he will interpret either to English into Portuguese. And his world has been changed with work from home. In reality, it's work from anywhere. It doesn't really matter as long as you have a network connection. So please join me as I make my way going through to Stansted Airport and come and be part of the journey with me. Is that all you're taking? Yeah, I'm just going there for, for the interview and then I'll be back. So, you know, I'll be back tonight or something like that. Okay. my passport and stuff out and then I'll go to them. You won't believe this. I've left my passport at home. I left my passport at hand. Oh man. Rowan's gonna be really, really miffed. Oh man. We just don't have enough time. Flight leaves now at midday. I don't have enough time to go back. Oh man. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna have to do this interview from home. Work from home. Okay.
we had to travel 100% of the times. So we had to travel everywhere, uh, whether it was in the same country, the same city, a different country. For example, as we mentioned, uh, when working for the European Commission, we had to go to Brussels the day before, and uh, we would have to <coughs> set up uh, our own um, travel arrangements, uh, accommodation, etc. Be there the day before, work for that day or two days. Sometimes it wouldn't be possible to come back home that evening. We'd have to stay for another day. So uh, all that stopped when the first lockdowns started uh, coming up. It took people quite a while before things started happening again, before organizations realized that um, they could make things happen uh, online. We had to adapt, we had to start finding out about things like having a good laptop, having good headsets, having a good internet connection, preferably via cable as some clients ask and some platforms basically demand. Uh, this has become kind of popular to say working from home. It can be working from anywhere we want as long as we have a good connection. Well, that's quite a curious question. Some speakers have already mentioned that um, uh, what they want is that after all this is over, they don't want the world to go back to where it was pre-pandemic. Uh, I can remember specifically one uh, speaker saying, I don't want this to go back to exactly the way it was before, because that means we haven't learned anything and we have to draw some lessons from all this. One of the reasons why you never see an interpreter working alone, we always work in pairs, because according to Murphy's law, if something can go wrong, you know, it will go wrong. So imagine I have a panic attack, uh, suddenly start coughing uncontrollably. And uh, for example, we always have some water available uh, for those situations. If um, I panic, um, I draw a blank and uh, I stop for too many seconds, something, anything, then the other interpreter takes over. Well, that was a very interesting experience because uh, teaching is a little bit different. Regarding what you asked about uh, performance from the students, it's also a little bit of a mix. I would say that um, students who were average remained more or less average. The ones with uh, better marks actually became better and um, maybe with only one or two exceptions, the weak ones improved, which was really surprising. So overall, um, in terms of results, I would say it was good. Yes, in fact, it was a bit of a surprise amongst teachers. And um, we've realized one thing that um, when we have classes in person with everybody in the classroom, then um, we have those students who pay attention all the time and we have those students who, when they choose to be distracted, they are distracted by many, many things. Uh, we have the option when all students start answering it the same time, we can switch on or off the microphones of one particular student or all of them when we want an answer just for one student. The level of concentration has to be a bit higher uh, than usual. They are not there physically. Yes, thank you. 
Thank you, Isaac, and on behalf of Extreme Academy as well. Uh, just to, w one final comment. I think that a year and a half ago, a few months ago, etc., uh, something like uh, what we are doing right now would be considered extravagant. And um, thanks to, to networks and the power to connect all over the world and um, most of the times to many points of the world simultaneously, this makes it uh, all possible. And um, just thinking that, um, for example, uh, for some people who live alone, uh, the elderly, people in a remote village uh, in whatever continent, it is thanks to networks that they can get a phone call from a family member, from uh, a friend, just checking up on them. And um, whether it is um, the good old 2G, 3G, 4G, and uh, more and more 5G lately, uh, through these networks, this kind of connection makes it all possible, whether it is a simple uh, voice call, whether it is uh, a Zoom meeting, whether it is a video call on a laptop or on a mobile, it is thanks to guys like you that this is all possible. So there you go. For people like me, uh, working from home is going to be the solution on how to do an interview with somebody in another country. Great, great video, Isaac. It's great to see you having a bit of fun and out on the road. There'll be more from Isaac in the weeks ahead. So we're moving around the office now. I'm in the EBC. This is the Executive Briefing Center. This is where we bring customers who come in to uh, assess and talk to extreme networks. Um, now you can see different social distancing measures are still in place around the office, helping us to keep uh, employees and visitors safe while they're on site. Uh, so next, we're going to introduce you to more people from Extreme. And in this feature, uh, we're going to show you and open your eyes to different careers that you could follow um, within companies like Extreme or, or companies like us. So it's not just technical roles. There's lots of jobs available in different areas of, uh, of IT, in sales, in marketing, uh, in product management, all kinds of things. So in this feature, we're gonna introduce you to a, an extreme employee each week and they can tell you their story and their tips for your career. Let's play the video. Let me just check my hair. I'll do, it's all right. Uh, my name is Holly Alexandra Anschutz and I work for Extreme Networks. <laughs> There's two answers to this. There's the corporate answer, which I've written, written in my book so I don't get it wrong. <laughs> Extreme Networks are a market-leading, cloud-driven, end-to-end networking solutions vendor delivering an effortless experience to all of our customers and partners. The real answer is, uh, if we were relating this uh, to a, a chat down the pub, uh, I would probably tell you uh, that yes, we're a, a manufacturer of networking solutions and technology and hardware and all of those types of things. But actually, to put it into context, uh, let's say from a uh, for, from your perspective, uh, at being in a university, uh, which we've which we've kitted out a lot of in the UK, um, this would allow you as a student to access all of your uh, IoT devices, we, we spoke about that earlier, uh, your Xbox, uh, your uh, personal computers in your rooms, uh, without anyone interfering with each other's uh, bandwidth, so you wouldn't get that problem that you probably get at home, which is who's turned off the internet. Uh, this is more like, oh look, I could use whatever I want whenever I want because there's an access point in your room or something like that. Uh, this will also allow you then when you're going into your lectures to ensure that you're
your teacher is able to access everything that they're able to, or your lecturer, teachers are at school, um, and, and uh, provide smooth, continuous running of the university for whatever capacity that you need it for. I head up the UK channel, the UK and Ireland channel, I should say, um, and what a, a channel is, uh, and it can be in any organisation, it's just the uh, flow of business from a vendor and, and how it makes its way down to an end user. So in, in our instance, we flow from ourselves to our distribution partners, which flows then to our partners, so our resellers, which then ultimately flows down to the end customer, and that, that is a channel, and I head up the UKI version of that. I'm a bit of a, uh, I'm a bit of a, a adrenaline junkie. Um, so I've in 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 between my my IT slash AV um, careers, um, I've had a motorbike track day company and done some motorbike racing. Um, I snowboard and have done for the last 10 years. Uh, mountain biking, do that quite a lot. Sailing, just come back, burnt my face. Um, yeah, I like kind of, I was going to say I like speed, but sailing is not that fast. So, <laughs> But it's windy, so it's kind of just as good. So yeah, I, I like doing that. And I like cooking and reading. You know, add those things on that you always do at the end of a CV. Socialising, travelling, <laughs> reading, cooking. <laughs> Who knows? If I said, I don't even remember moving from, when I first started, I, we, were, we were using um, just monitors that, you know, those, um, I can't even remember who made them it was so long ago, but they were just sort of all the same with green writing. So it was a slow transition through that into sort of desktops and then to email and so I can't actually remember the exact moment that uh, the, the, the kind of the light bulb moment with the internet, it just kind of happened. No is the short answer. Um, I, I never uh, had ever thought, yes, that's where I want to be. Um, I wanted to be a vet when I when I uh, first first thought about uh, careers, but I'm not clever enough for that. So, um, IT it is. Uh, but no, actually, I started off an IT, an IT distributor, and yes, although we did lots of different things, networking wasn't wasn't the first option. Honestly, PE. <laughs> I liked sport <laughs> and I really like my teacher. <laughs> oh God, I've made loads of mistakes. Um, and you learn from every single one of them. Um, I think if you don't try things and then they don't fail, then you don't learn. So uh, all throughout my career, you know, the 25, 28 years that I've been working, um, I've made hundreds of mistakes, but I would never regret any of them. I can't pick one out because, like I said, I've made many. So um, I would just be one of those would be, try it. If it doesn't work, don't do it again. <laughs> yes, it was a ZX Spectrum <laughs> with a rubbery keyboard. <laughs> that was the updated new one. <laughs> So it depends on what, what you kind of uh, uh, call big, but the UK team is approximately about 25 people currently, and in my team I've got six. So yes, it's a, it's a, it's a reasonable team um, in terms of what we do. Um, and yes, it's incredibly enjoyable. It's fast paced and, and hard work, but it's never a dull moment. Well, the work achievement I'm particularly proud of is it was becoming head of the channel for the UK at, at Extreme. Um, I'd been a partner account manager before, what we call a PAM, um, but partner account manager is the is the uh, the official title for that. Uh, working with some of our largest UK partners as part of the channel, um, and did a good job with those, and that was recognised. And and I really I'm not one for blowing my own trumpet, but has been recognised on a number of occasions as as top global PAM um, and therefore I was promoted um, three years into that tenure and, and so for me that's a big achievement. 
depends which IT role, but yes, over the years, done plenty of training. I've done project management training. Um, that was quite a long time ago. Um, done obviously all the training that you do when you're uh, w within a company so that you're obviously up to date with uh, everything that's going on although you wouldn't have known that from the answers that I gave earlier <laughs> but I do do a lot of training so all of our sales training our technical training and I've always done that throughout uh, whichever company I work for. Oh gosh, I would never say any, I would never say someone's name. That's a really, really lame answer, but I wouldn't. There's so many, and again, this might say, sound like a lame answer, but there's so many good people uh, that I work with at the moment across all, without, without those people in all of those areas, we just wouldn't be able to do what we're doing. Um, so therefore, there's so many good people in this organization across, across all, all areas of our business. So uh, all of them. Well, you see, I said earlier on that I wanted to be a vet, but I actually wouldn't want to be a vet because I'm not very good with seeing animals in pain. <laughs> so I wouldn't be able to do that even if I was able to fix them. I'd probably be a motorbike racer or a, or a professional snowboarder. I don't know, something like that. My first networking interview was here for Extreme because this is the first networking vendor that I've worked for. Not the first IT vendor, but the first networking vendor. So I remember very clearly uh, it was with Sean Collins, who is our uh, director for international channels um, and a guy called Jeff who's not here anymore. But yes, Sean is still my manager, so not much has changed. <laughs> Any tips? Um, be yourself, um, be natural, um, be interested, um, do a bit of research, you know, understand who you're meeting and why. Um, but generally I'd always say just be yourself because people like people. To work with, um, somebody who is um, I think probably I covered this in a previous answer, but somebody who's not really afraid to ask questions uh, or to sound silly. Uh, you know, there's no silly answers to anything. You know, you might not have thought about everything yourself and in the majority people don't. So uh, inquisitiveness, um, interest, uh, drive, tenacity, all of those things are, if, if somebody's got that in your team, then you, you're never going to go wrong working with or working with or alongside or for any of those people. Excellent. Should I home now? Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> sadly, <laughs> sadly Thank you. not. Meetings. Hope you hope you enjoyed that video and took something from it. What what I recommend you do is go and have a look at our our website, extremenetworks.com, go and look at the careers page, go and look at some of the jobs that we've got listed and do the same with other IT companies. All the, you, you can just go and search all the big ones, go and look at the job boards and start to look for some of the terms that you heard uh, spoken about there. And, um, and we hope this is gonna help you find jobs and not, not just the jobs that you imagine are gonna be on offer, but some of the jobs that we, we're, we're really looking for specific skills. And we're probably using some of that terminology you heard that might've been difficult to recognize before. And we'll introduce you to more people from Extreme in the weeks to come and they'll share their stories and open your eyes to other opportunities that could, uh, could tempt you into the IT industry. So coming up next, we've got something different, uh, something brand new again, and we call it you know, being a better human. And, and these are skills, this is knowledge, and they give you awareness of things that they, they may not have taught you in school, they may have not taught you in college, but they're hot topics for us in the IT industry, they're hot topics for us you know, broadly in companies. So as you go into interviews, with this knowledge uh, in your mind and a perspective on it, we believe you're gonna stand out from other people going for that job. So this is being a better human. What I did is I, I caught up with some um, people around Extreme, uh, talked about some big topics. So roll the video, here's something we recorded earlier. Hi, I'm here with Kimberly Bassnight. Um, this is Being a Better Human, and this week we're talking about inclusion. Hi, Kimberly, how are you doing? Hello, Rowan. I'm doing absolutely wonderful. I hope you are. 
I, I'm, I'm, I am, and, thank, and thanks for joining as we really appreciate you taking some time to talk to the Extreme Academy community. So, so of course, Kimberly, I'm excited to be here. Fantastic. So, Kimberly, let's, let's, let's kick off straight away. Let's talk about inclusion. And maybe you could start by explaining you know, what's the difference between diversity, because we're about diversity and inclusion. What's the difference between diversity and inclusion? Yeah, I love I, a couple things. I would I would say um, there, Rowan. Diversity is bringing people to the table, bringing differences to the table. Um, you know, we 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 read a book called uh, The Loudest Duck, and we talked about Noah's Ark, bringing two of each into the the ark. But inclusion is once they get onto the ark, to the table, encouraging them to speak up to add value, to bring their ideas, to bring their authentic self. And the other part that I really love about when we really do inclusion well, is we now encourage them to take a lead role or lead. So those are, that's the primary difference between diversity and inclusion. Could, 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 could you just go a little bit deeper? Um, what, what, what do companies like Extreme do to foster uh, inclusion. Yeah, so to give you some backstory, you know, years ago, diversity is not new. We've been working at this for years, many, many, many years. Companies have been working at this and, and investing dollars to, um, to drive greater diversity. But we realized, and people much smarter than us realized that diversity is not enough because if you have solved the diversity question, but then you have not solved the inclusion piece, which is people feel comfortable speaking up and bringing their authentic self and bringing their voice to the table, then we only have a portion of the, the valuable contribution that that person can bring. One thing, um, one quote I heard um, from Brene Myers, who has spent years in this space, is um, diversity is being asked to the party but inclusion is being asked to dance. I think that really speaks to what we're trying to accomplish at Extreme is we want to encourage, you know, both the dominant voices, you know, if you look at our tech companies, they're primarily, you know, there's a demographic that's dominant. But if we look at the, the others that we're trying to bring into the environment, you'll find that even as we bring new people in, a lot of them don't feel empowered to speak up. So at Extreme, we are empowering um, everyone to speak up. If you have a seat at the table, you have that seat because we want your contribution. We we found, and, and many others have found, you know, others that have done a lot of research, McKinsey, Gartner, Gallup, have found that when we get cognitive diversity, which means we, we not only get the difference, but we get the different ideas. That's when we really get the best ideas. And that's when innovation and breakthrough happens. Okay, fantastic. So we understand what inclusion is. We understand the difference between uh, diversity and inclusion. Um, so, so Kimberly, for the people watching, uh, have you got any advice for what they should do? What should they think about? Is there something they should go and watch or read? Or what, 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 what are your tips? Yeah, just a couple tips that I want to share. The first is to become more self-aware. There's tons of data out on this topic, but understanding who you are, understanding your authentic self. We don't talk a lot about this in this space, but I think it's important that as we begin to become more diverse and more inclusive, it's important that you're really aware of who you are and understanding your biases, understanding your unconscious biases. So I, those are two things that I would immediately do is one, becoming more self-aware. Number two, understanding your own unconscious biases. And then number three, um, go get educated. There's a really great book that we read um, as an organization called The Loudest Duck. And the author, Laura Liswood, really breaks down this whole bias discussion. I just think that as we become more educated in the space, especially for those that are going through the academy, moving out into new roles, moving into this new tech industry, maybe, that it would be great for you to have this as a, a, a reference point. Um, as, you know, as you're going into that interview or you're going into that new role in that new company, having an inclusion um, reference point um, would, would serve you very well. 
that that's a fantastic book and the chances are the person who's interviewing might have read it as well so um yeah, that, that, that's a great tip so we'll we'll make sure we put the name of the book and the author in, in the chat window so uh so people can pick that up and um and go and check that out so so f- final final question kimberly so imagine you're interviewing somebody um what what's a good question um that you might ask somebody and then tell us what what the type of response you might be looking for So in the frame of inclusion, the question I would ask is, tell me about when in your career you felt most included and why? Most of the time, the answer to that question is, I felt most included when I felt heard. And so I'd I'd ask that question not only to understand that person's um, background and you know, their exposure to inclusion, but also to have them think about what do I need to do differently that I show up differently, that I, what do I need to do differently that I be heard? And even, you know, as, as I'm sitting across the interview table, having this conversation, um, I would reiterate that, you know, at Extreme, we are all about ensuring that everyone feels they can bring their authentic self to work, but also that they are heard and seen. Fantastic. Well, th- thank you, Kimberly. With This has been Being a Better Human. We've been talking to Kimberly Bass and I about inclusion. And um, thanks again, Kimberly. Now it's back to the studio. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Wow, what a great episode. Great new format. Hope you enjoyed that. Trying to have a bit of fun. What do you think, Claire? What was your favourite bit? So exciting. Yeah, brilliant. I love the new format. Hope you guys enjoyed the features. Uh, For me, I love the fun side of it. Uh, You know, we're playing games, we're asking questions. And what I really like is that we're just here to ask people's opinions. There's no right or wrong answers. Uh, We're just trying to share a bit of knowledge uh, through a bit of entertainment as well. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. Standout moment, mega trends. Oh, mega trends, of course. <laughs> <laughs> favourite part. Your favourite part. Favourite part. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, throughout the whole episode, what do you think, uh, how do you think we can sum this up for everyone? Um, I think I think Claire would just remind everybody what, what what the objective was. What was the learning objective? I mean, this is about trying to help you get a job or trying to help you get a better job. So, as you're watching this uh, and you watch the future episodes, just just let let this content just flow over you, absorb it. It's about you know, try, trying to form your own opinions, trying to find your own perspectives and stories. That's what it's about. You know, giving you um, content that you can turn into a story in your own mind, you kind of process it and then you can relay that as, it, as if it was your own. Yeah. So even though it wasn't your experience, you've seen enough, you've seen Isaac try to bring it to life mm. uh, with a bit of fun and you could tell one of those stories and stand out in the interview. Now don't forget, at the end of the uh, four episodes, there's a certification exam. So, you know, just by doing this, having a bit of fun with us, you'll be able to get the third, yeah, the, get the third <laughs> certification exam uh, free of charge uh, badge from Extreme Networks. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So anything else, Claire? We've got uh, to cover yeah. anything else before we go? I think the last thing is just a bit of feedback. Obviously, we love to learn what we're doing wrong or right. And yeah, everything uh, comes from you guys. So yeah, anything that you want to share with us, please pop in the comments um, or in the chat. Um, and also our Discord server. So yeah, please share anything that you would like to see us maybe change or do better. Also tell us what you like, hopefully you know. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, tell us. And don't forget to subscribe. If you're watching on yeah, you're watching on YouTube, if you're not subscribed to the channel, then please subscribe, click the notification bell, um, and then you'll get get uh, you know, you'll get automatic notifications of when the next episode is on and other content that we'll post in this series. That's good. All right, that's it. So that's it. same time next week on YouTube. See you there. Yeah, see you there. Take care.